I knew that my life wanted to expand into smelling orange blossoms. Okay? Right at that moment. So I said, Roland, I need, I need to find a job. The children have started kindergarten. I've got half a day. And I can invest it in something interesting. And also, you know, I have a goal. He says, what goal? I tell you, I want to buy you a Christmas present with my money. Ah, you know what the women do? They steal. <laughs> yeah. they, they steal the money from the shopping. How else? Can we buy you a tie? <laughs> so I looked and looked. I'm trying to look for a job that will be interesting, will pay me some money, and will allow me to work only a few hours a day. And I tell you, I wasn't very lucky in Rome. So my husband gets invited to go to a meeting. And by the pilot, so that night, he and me and the pilot go to this hotel. Lots of noise, but I must tell you, you guys make more noise than the Italians. Uh, it was wonderful. We arrived in this uh, hotel. My husband looked through the door at the back and saw a big product display. So he turns to me and he says, with his commander's voice, he says, uh, Anna Maria, I want to remind you that it is you who is looking for a job. <laughs> it was like, you know, don't get me involved. I don't want to have anything to do with this stuff. Okay? Anyway, they forced us to sit in the front row. My husband wanted to sit at the back near the exit, you know, just in case. <laughs> but we sat, we sat in the front row and we listened to the explanation of the marketing plan. The, uh, it was so complicated. This, this little man with a mustache like Salvador Dali, you know, he, he's talking really fast and he's drawing balls on the, on, on, on the board. I didn't really understand anything. So, so at the end, I was so desperate to do something, I said to my sponsor, I said, Claudio, I want to try and be in this business, but I haven't really understood what I have to do. Will you help me? And he said, Ana Maria, I will help you. I will train you. I will teach you everything I know. He says, but you got to consider I've only been in the business one week. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I'm telling you, it was funny because he didn't know anything. I, I didn't understand anything. My husband, he didn't want to know anything. <laughs> now, having said that, when I started in the first few months, I made all the mistakes you made. I also made all the mistakes you haven't made yet. <laughs> but you will. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell you, this is a classic. I mean, I've gotta tell you, when I, I sold my first five kilos of LDC, I went to a friend of mine who had a swimming pool. And I said, you know what? If you put LDC in the water, it will stop the fat from sticking to the sides. It will keep the fat floating on the surface. And he said, oh, that's wonderful. 
And he said, how much LDC should I put in the water? I, I thought, well, why sell one bottle when you can sell five kilos? <laughs> so he, he put the five kilos in the water, and guess what happened? Every time somebody dived in, the bubbles dived out. Oh, and the poor man, he had to empty that pool three or four times because he couldn't get rid of LDC. <laughs> now, you must understand, this happened 42 years ago. And my friend is still not talking to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, even though the beginning was so Like, you know, like we didn't really know what we were doing. After a year, we had built the biggest organization in the whole of Italy. When people come here and talk to you, I divide the speakers into three groups. One type of speaker will tell you the what. You know, what is the product? What uh, do we do? What are we going to do? What has the company done? What will the company do in the future? So there's a what that starts the whole thing. And then someone will come and they'll tell you how. You know, how to invite, how to speak, how to sell, how to uh, control, how to delegate, whatever. Well, I belong to the third species. I do the why, okay? Why are you here? Why did you start? Why? What is the thing inside your stomach that makes you get up in the morning and run and talk and invite and share? What is that why? Because it's the why that makes all the difference. You know, the truth is we could be selling shoelaces. We could be selling anything, apples. But it's the way we do it, and it's the why we do it. And so we are very, 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 uh, how do you say, advantaged by the fact that we believe in our products, by the fact that we believe in the company, by the fact that we believe that we can change people's lives. And that way, because we believe, because it becomes our why, then it becomes so normal and so easy to give our why to other people. You know, my little granddaughter came and said, Nona, you're so old. Why are you still working? Huh? Why am I still working? What is my why after 42 years? You know, I must have canceled my goals. I built a house I wanted. I've got the money that will allow me to live comfortably. I've given my children everything I could. So little by little, all that list got canceled and canceled. So why am I here? Why am I talking to you? Because it has become a way of life. It has become a way of thinking. It has become a way of loving. And you know, even though some of you have never met, I love you. <laughs> now, I know what a lot of you have gone through and are going through running this business. Two and a half years ago, I decided, my, my, the founder, Jerry, said to me, look, you know, I believe that if our executives were out there on the field with the people, they could train so much better because they would know what the people have to go through every day when they get a no, when they work with a friend and then the friend disappears, you know? 
So, so by doing it, you get so much closer to them. And I said, you know what? I said, it's not only that. There's another reason. The other reason is, I remember, I don't know how many of you met Graham Caldwell. Okay? I remember Graham Caldwell taking a sheet of paper, holding it up like this, and saying, you know why? What is the greatness of this business? You take a sheet of paper and a pen, and you can sit down in a bar, in a coffee shop, in a restaurant, on the steps of your house, in her kitchen, in his uh, whatever, and wherever you are, you can do with that piece of paper, you can start building the biggest business in the world if you want to. Because you sit there and you start drawing circles. <laughs> You know, when you understand that you can be in a business that is a commercial business that you can build just by talking to people, by having a sheet of paper and a pen in your hand, when you're in a business that does not require you to go to the bank and get enormous amounts of money to open a shop or to do a business of any kind, when you realize that, then you know what you've got. You have got the biggest opportunity in the world today. And you know something? I met a distributor last year who opened my eyes because I said, hello, what do you do? And he said, I am a full-time doctor and I am a professional network marketer. You know, he gave me a reason to explain myself when people come to you. What do you do? And we try to explain it. Oh, we, we, we sell nutrition. We make people healthier. We build businesses. We do this. We do that. And sometimes we can't express it. You know what we are? We are professional network marketing people. And you know what that means? Network marketing is the future. It's not the little shop in the corner. It's not the supermarket. It's that blog and that internet and that thing where you can order something and it'll come to your door. It's, it's the Skype, it's the whatever. It is our chance to make anybody who wants to work from home, and I could have done it as a housewife, and I never dreamed that I would be here 42 years later talking to you. I never dreamed I'd see Australia and the Philippines and the whole of Europe and America. I never dreamed that it could happen to me. And to this day, when I think about it, I get emotional because this business, this business is unbelievable. You know, I used to say, and I haven't said this in a very long time because when I said it the first time, I was a young mother and I had two small children. Now I'm an old grandmother and I've got seven grandchildren. <laughs> but you know what? I remember I used to get up and I used to run. I used to run all day, talk to people, do parties, do this, do that. And one night, my little son said, Mom, you know, you hardly ever come to school now to pick me up. And all the other mothers, they, they, they're always there. And he said, and you know what? The other mothers tell their kids fairy stories. And sometimes you're just not here. And I, I didn't know what to say. You know, it sort of clumps your throat right down. And... I, I looked at him and I said, you know, Robbie, a lot of mothers tell a lot of fairy stories. I'm working very hard because I want you to live a fairy story. <laughs> a 
And you know, they grew up using words like goals, using words like fight to reach a target, using words that meant let's be positive, let's dream, let's dream big, let's live with the other people in the world, let's love people because that's what we're here for, to share, to love, and to dream of a very, very big picture. So, to close this morning, we want the next generation. I have built, in the last two and a half years, the youngest group in the whole of Italy. And you know why? And you know how it happened? They don't identify with my age. They identify with the vision that I'm selling them. The young want to dream. The young don't want to make a little bit of money selling a little bit of product. They want to create something that will change their life. If you give them that, they will join you and work. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tijani, Afis, say hello to your team. Hello. Spark. Spark, Spark. Are you alive? Are you upset or present? Spark. Spark, Spark. Spark, Spark, Spark. When you spark, when you step up, when you make money, when you feel good, when you live long, when you die home, when you go to heaven, when you see about God. Okay, thank you, thank you. Stand your own. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, we wanted to get that behind us, so we can now hear your story, right? Mr. 2.5. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We want to hear uh, Mr. 2.5 story, so please, let's, let's give Mr. Tijani an opportunity to share his story with everybody. And I know that um, he has the most excited team in all of the Neolife world for sure. So, Mr. Tijani, everybody, or most of the people here have never met you. So, I would like to spend some time with you now so that you can, you can share your journey to this place with everybody. So, t tell us at the beginning, where did your journey start? Where were you born in Nigeria? Just tell us how... Where were you born? In, in which part of Nigeria? Um, good afternoon, everybody. I was born in Nisein, Oyo State, Nigeria. I'm educated, I'm an economist. After school. So you went to school in I Nigeria? School. What, was school, what was it like where you went to school? Uh, when I went to school, uh, my mother was selling pepper before and vegetables in the market. My mother was too poor, and my father was extremely poor. And so, tell me, do, who, who, did you have other family members? Uh, did you have brothers or sisters? Yeah, for sure. I have uh, sisters, and I have a brother. And, um, are they older or younger than you? Most of them are older than me, uh -huh. and um, only two are younger than me. My immediate younger sister and our last so you went to school in Nigeria, and then after school, what did you decide to do? What was your ambition as, as somebody who was going to school? What did you want to achieve for yourself? Um, when I, I went to school in, uh, in, I mean, in poverty, and I struggled to go to school, and my parents, uh, my dad and my mom struggled for me to be educated. And I went to school, and I'm an economist by profession. So after school, you, after went, to, school, you went to university? 
Yeah, I graduated as an economist. After graduation, I was jobless for a good two years. You know, searching for a job, every nook and kind of Nigeria. But you know, just situation of creative jobs. So when you were qualified as an economist, economist, yeah. you had no, nowhere to go. You had no work for two years? No job for two years. After two years, and what jobless. did you do with yourself during that time? Yeah, after two years being jobless, I let her go to as a teacher. As a teacher, I have a big dream. As a teacher, to build big houses, buy nice cars, travel around the whole world. And the most important as a teacher, I want to help people around me. I discussed a teacher to achieve all these dreams. It's not possible. So, so how I much, compare let what me, I was doing. Let me ask you, how much did you earn in this job as a teacher? How, what was your pay at the end of the month? And as a teacher, my salary then was 15,000. 15,000 naira, yeah. which today would be what? In, uh, in US dollars, you divide that today by maybe 500 or 400, I'm not sure. Yeah. So he earned in the region of 30 or 40 dollars a month. Yeah. 10, somebody says 10, somebody says, this is like the fluctuation of the dollar is so fast it goes from 10 to 50 very quickly. So you, as a teacher, you were earning about 10 to 20 or 30 dollars a month. Yeah. What was your life like then? Um, actually, I, I was a teacher just for two months. Ah. Yes, I compare what I was doing because right from the beginning of my life, I was a dreamer. I'm a dreamer? A dreamer. Yes. Okay. And I, I resigned after two months as a teacher. I left the job. Why? Because I compare what I was doing with what I wanted to achieve. I discovered there are two parallel lines that could never meet. So your, your ambition and your dreams were beyond what you saw as a teacher? As a teacher. So after two months, I resigned. I left the job. So what were you looking for? What, did, what was your circumstances then and what were you looking for? Uh, when I resigned as a teacher, I was selling red midwest. I was selling clothes at the summer market in Pedro Street, Lagos Island. It was where I was selling red midwest. Somebody met me. A stranger talked to me. Somebody I never knew talked to me. That's my sponsor. Is he talking to me about this business? So you, let's just go slow. So you were selling clothes in the marketplace. That's yeah, what you were sure. doing. Yeah, but you were, you were continually searching for something better and new. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was searching for something better and new. Okay. And then you met who? Tell us the story about then what caused you to join the business. Yeah, when I was there selling clothes, my sponsor met me there. My sponsor um, came to buy clothes from me. Two pairs of wear. 1,005 each. The two. 3,000 that day. I'll never forget. And uh, God saved me. Because that day, my sponsor talked to me. The man almost left, thinking I couldn't do it. Because when I, go to, when, I went, when I went to shop, I was dressed like a teacher. So, and uh, to be sincere, listen, God saved me. I, I didn't be the man. Did not, the, man the man had taken about three steps away and just looked back. Can this man do it? And they walk back to me to show me. So you thing. almost missed the opportunity, right? Almost. Then. So what? Because made he was thinking, maybe I could, I, I could not do it, you know. And so what made you? What happened then? Tell us what made you say yes. What made you feel that you could do this? And when when the man talked to me, and I went to the company at uh, Bagada, and when I got there, to be sincere, I was disappointed because I heard about this company when I was in school. You see, I rejected it. I neglected it. I said it was not meant for me. Uh, I used to make jest of my friend who was doing it that time. That oh boy, you are crazy. You are wasting your time. You see, I told him that time. When I got there, but the person who fatted me, which um, is my sponsor, persuaded him to enter. And I entered the company reluctantly. And uh, that day, they sent me for me. They did one more for me. That day, I discovered that very day, this is what I've been looking for. So you went from, as you entered the company, you were first very disappointed by what you saw. Yeah, we, because we, we, you had heard stories from before that the people were not successful in the business. Yes, yes. And then when you got to learn about what the business was all about, you then decided to join. I decided to join. Okay, so you then joined. Tell us about the first things you did as a new distributor. When I joined the business, I talked to my friend, um, my sister's Everybody, as usual. But all of them rejected me. <laughs> you see? You, did you speak to your, your brothers and your sisters? I talked to all of them. They okay. rejected me. They said um, I was out of my sense. They said that they, um, I did not know what um, I was doing. They said um, they brainwashed me. They said, um, you see, this thing can lead, can lead to anywhere. In fact, um, 
And then my mother turned back to me. You see, because she suffered because of us, because I was doing something she did not understand. But I've seen what I, I, I was seeing what they did not see. You see, I think so. You had a vision of your future. What was yeah. what is it that you saw? What is it that you saw that you believed that you could now go out and do it? I discover when I this me for me. I discover this business. If I can build my network, I can have a um, bigger network. And uh, I love helping people right from my childhood. I was born poor. When my mommy gave me a mala and a widow, ordinary widow, you see, do you know what I'm talking about? No stew, no meat or beef. And any day we had um, basic, we celebrated it. You know? Okay. And uh, that's, that time, that time, that time, uh, that time, I, 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 might be hung, I might be hungry, but I will give my food, you know, poverty as categories. <laughs> you understand? So we are, we are very, we are, we are very, we were very poor, but some people were poorer than us. <laughs> you understand? So, and uh, my food, that, when my mother gave me food, I would give it to my friend when I was a little boy. Uh-huh. So I would give my food out, they would eat it. I know that after eating it, if my mother got to know, maybe she went to the bathroom. I said, yeah, come, eat it fast, fast. My mommy will come and send you away. When they hurt it, my mother came. My mother will beat me. But after beating me, she so will find me something to eat again. Oh, okay. So, so from a very early age, you've been somebody that cares for people. Yeah. Would you think that your caring for people has helped you build your business where it is today? And it is um, what I believe, yes. It's good to be caring, and uh, not because of anything. It is, if, if you don't have it, it can, it can develop it. You know, if you can care for people, you can get a better result. You see, because people don't want to know how much you know until they know how much you care. Fantastic. So tell us, uh, give him a hand, give him a hand. Now, good. Thank you. So uh, uh, tell, share with everybody here. You know, you joined the business how many years ago now? And um, September last year, make it a decade. Make it a ten, ten, ten years. years. So slowly but surely, over the past 10 years, you've been very consistent in growing. I mean, we've, uh, we've, we've developed and worked together, so we've seen your development now to where you have the biggest team in probably the entire Neolife world. So what I'd, li- what, I'd like, what I'd like you to share with us, which is very important, what I'd like you is, how did you do that? What... what did you do that created this wonderful uh, spark team now what did you do what what was your steps that you took and there's no much and um, um when i started business number one point is commitment commitment is what make what other people think difficult easy for you commitment i am committed if over committed is anything i do i like to excel I don't settle for average, you know. And I do it not because of, I tell my people, this is not, this is not a business of five, 10, 15 years. This is a business for her. So you have to build a business that can stand the test of time. Fantastic. So, so in 10 years with that commitment, what are the steps that you teach your, t- your leaders? Because you've got many fantastic leaders here. What is it that you share with them so that they can go ahead and build? How have you, how have you trained them and what is the message that you have in your team uh, in order to build the business? Uh, what I said there, number one, is commitment, as I've said. Number one is self-discipline. And uh, under self-discipline, I call something self-control. As a leader, you must have self-control. You see, a leader must have self-discipline, must be careful what to do, what to say. Anything that happens to you, anything you say, the way you dress, anything you say, anywhere you go, everything you do, talk about your leadership. You know, so I tell my people to be committed, to be self-disciplined, and attitude is everything. Attitude determines your altitude. You know, attitude determines how far you will go. So if you are not seeing the result today, don't be negative. You know, it's, life is full of ups and downs. You know, so that is zigzag, is zigzag upwards. You know, there are some things, it's the reality of life. So if you understand the reality of life, you, are, you, are, you understand the reality of network marketing. So, uh, Mr. Dejani, in 10 years, you've come from a poor teacher 
okay. to what I would consider now to be one of the wealthiest men there in Nigeria, because I know how much money you make. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 share with us, share with us a little bit about your team, the team you have now, and how you develop this team and how you as a team work together. Share with us a little bit how you, how you are continuing to build your team now. Yeah, uh, number one point, um, the way to build this business um, is to have a system. And um, no matter what happens, stick to the system and follow the system. And um, it is a normal thing in life that when we face challenge, challenges make some people to break down. Challenges make some people to break record. The more challenges you face, the more successful you become. If you hate challenges, you hate success. And uh, we have got what it takes to get to the top. And uh, to remain there. And the uh, number one point is attitude. You have to program your mind for success. And um, growth doesn't just happen. You have to work on the growth. If you grow by accident, it will not last. You understand? Because you grow accidentally. Growth has to be intentional. And um, without change, there can be growth. Change is inevitable. So you have to grow and you have to work on uh, leadership. As I've said, exemplary, you have to be lead by example. Because people, they see, people will do what they see you doing rather than what you tell them to do. Fantastic. You have to be a leader. And how many, how many people in your team do you sponsor each and every month now? In your entire business, how many people come in, new people? <sighs> ah, to be sincere, it is uh, a lot of people coming in. I register people, we register people a lot in our team, and I register people personally, myself. And like one of my friends I just registered, I told him my friend, I told my friend some time ago, he's a friend, we are friends together on campus with Lawal and Co. But uh, he rejected it that time. So and Lawal was doing it, but he just registered now. And he sent me a message that I'm ready to work for my, I told him that time, but now he's, he's seeing the results of the business. You understand? So we register people, and I can't even tell you the number of people we register in our team. So we were activity-oriented, not resource-oriented. You see, if you let results determine your attitude, you can grow to the top. You can last. But let your activity determine your results. Don't be resource-oriented. You have to be activity-oriented. Okay. So now in closing, because we're running out of time now, I want you to share with everybody what this business is, how has your life changed? Tell us about your family and what you have done together. And uh, share with us a little bit about the excitement of becoming a Five Diamond Director. Hello. You see, and it's very important to step up. And stepping up is out of leading others. In, it's out of showing others the possibilities. Being a five diamond director is a wonderful experience. Not just a five diamond director, a qualified five diamond director. So what have you achieved? What, what, I've what achieved a lot excited? of things. Share some of those with us quickly. What has been the fun things that you have? Uh, as a five diamond director, I've achieved a lot of things in this business. I have many things, many properties. I've actually my first home, I built for myself, it's a duplex. I wanted to live there myself, and uh, after I was about packing to the home before uh, some people approached the cleaners, that they had any contact with the owner, and they gave me my contact out. And in not share, that duplex is leased to a bank. Uh, look at me today, I'm a landlord to a bank. <laughs> and it is real money. When the bank is paying you, it's a repaying the bank. In my second home, it's a palace. That's Kenyan Palace. And that is where I lived before with my family. You see, but when I became, by the time I was working by Five Diamond Director, I built a new home. And uh, I, leave, I left Kenyan Palace to the Diamond Filler. You understand? You see? And the Diamond Filler is a new home where I live now. And the Diamond Filler is a place where I have jacuzzis and cubicles. <laughs> you know? Where I have... Uh, 
No power failure. Okay. Now tell you us see? a little bit. You've traveled a lot. I've traveled a lot. I'm tell, us, drive- tell us, share with us a bit of the places you have traveled to uh, in, this, in the past couple of years. I'm driving six Jeeps. Three Jeeps. Six. Six. Five yeah. Jeeps, he, one car. Only he can drive six Jeeps. Five I Jeeps, one car. I can only drive car. one. And uh, the latest one is um, customized KNM edition. Land Cruiser, 2016 model. 2016 model Land Cruiser, customized. You see, when I go in the street of Lagos, policemen, soldiers salute me. You know? Okay, we end that time. So, share with us a, f- a final. Okay, so you can see what it's like, and uh, we have a very humble Five Diamond director with us today. And uh, in closing, what do you see as the future for your business? Uh, for Africa, uh, where, where are we going in your life? Uh, the future. Before the future, I've traveled a lot. I've been driven part of the world, I've been a cause of the world because of this company. Number one thing in this business is money. Number one, number two is travels. Number, one, number two is travel. You make money and you travel. Recently, I travel a lot. I can be traveling every month. You see, recently I just came back from Tanzania travel with my family, with my kids and my wife. We went from Nigeria to the United States of America. Not by the company, from my pocket. I took them, we went to Orlando, went to Disney World, Magic Kingdom, Sea World. We went to Orlando, and then we left the US, we went to Biomass. You understand? We went to Biomass, it's a very wonderful experience. You see, we went there to live the life of worthy people. You understand? You see, with my, for my money, that doesn't stop the company travels. So. Okay, so share with us the future. We must close now. Hello? In the future? Hey, listen, please. Network marketing is a final frontier for human development. Network marketing is a final frontier for human development. And uh, if faint grows your business, my brother and my sister, no matter where you come from, from Togo, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, I love South African people. They don't miss your friends. By the time we face a little, little challenge, we start to dodge events. The more you dodge events, the worse it becomes. Event grow your business. Life is, up, is full of ups and downs. There's nothing bad in falling down. A man or a woman is successful, not because he or she has never fallen, but has been rising after many falls. Event grow your belief system. You see, you know the reason you learn from other leaders and then you pick up again. So, and it's very important to attend the event. You, no matter what you face, keep coming to the event. This is where you learn what you need to pick up again. You understand? And this new beginning, I believe you can rewrite your story. The future. I'm too excited about the future. You can, I can see many people in our team, everywhere, becoming PT, Diamond. I told you, 2009, when I was at Durban as a two ruby director, I, fission is the heart of seeing the invisible. I said 2009, I was, that I was a two ruby director. I said, watch out for me. I'm a next diamond. I said it, I really have to tape at home. But today, I'm not just a diamond, I'm a qualified five diamond diamond. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. <laughs>
As we have heard, Mtu is the name, Mokwena is the surname, and uh, I'm your friend. Uh, we have been in the business now for the past 34 years, and when we started, I was covered in debt. When I came into the business, I was told that that will all go off. It was very difficult to believe and understand that because I had lost hope. Even when I was praying, I used to say, Dear God, please take me, not another day. Because as I saw my children growing, I was becoming very, very scared as to what the future of these children will be. So when I got into the business and I started doing the business, they gave me a habit, which according to our president, Roger, is habit number three, sponsoring. They said, if you want to be successful, you must understand that you cannot do it all by yourself. You really have got to build a team. I went out and I started sponsoring. And in sponsoring, it's not like recruiting. There's a difference between recruiting and sponsoring. You've got to make sure that you care for the people that you bring into the business. You, 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 you support them. You love them. You help them. You make sure that they grow in business. And as I was doing that, I found all my debts have been paid off. That gave me so much encouragement that I never wanted to do anything else except going out and make sure that I sponsor people. As I was doing that, bringing them to become managers, senior managers, I was told that I am now a director. Wow! That made me very, very excited because by becoming a director, Things, the, 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 the way of life changed completely. I found myself having to sleep and wake up when I finished sleeping. When I was a director, I found that I'm beginning now to undergo the director habits. I started walking like a director. I found myself eating like a director. And even the talks, when I approached a filling station, you know those guys when you approach them, they come up and uh, you talk softly, but they end up talking loud, what you, repeating what you are saying. <laughs> if you say, uh, give me two liters. They'll say, oh, you want two liters of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was a director, I said, I'm going to show them. I'm going to go there and speak like a director. <laughs> Got in there, I said, they said, how much say? I said, fill it up. <laughs> and what is nice is that when you see such things happening, you then start. Setting for yourself another goal. 
And I set myself another goal. And I said, I am going to achieve what I, it was not possible before New Life Business. I'm going to give my children the best education that the country can offer. And what I did, I went out and sponsored more. You know, when you sponsor, when you are a director and you become excited, and this is what I learned from our founder, Jerry. He said, make sure you build one relationship at a time. If you build one relationship at a time, you are going to end up creating a business like uh, uh, Afiz was saying, a business that is going to stand, a business that is going to sustain, a business that is going to be there for a long time. And exactly that is what I did. And when I did that, I found myself that when I sponsor them, they become directors and they get to where I was. Because once they become directors, I take a step higher than that. When that happens, guess what happens? Started changing the things. We've got three children, all graduates. Senior one, the elder one, is uh, having a senior degree. Right now, he is busy with his uh, MBA. That is Linda Day. And we know very well that uh, he is going to succeed in doing that. Well done. Keep going there, sir. Really appreciate that. Now, when you see those happening, you say, I have given my children the best education. My wife is no longer uh, working as a sister. She is with me in the business. And if she feels like going for an operation. We don't even think about it. We just say, go for it, mom. And she will just go and take it off and bring another one. <laughs> Why is that? It is because of the sponsoring that you do. You see, when you sponsor people because you're taking care of them, they remain in the business because they see themselves developing as well. And how do you do that? By simply following three simple steps that our president, Roger, has uh, uh, taught us. And he's still te teaching us how to sponsor. And if you follow these three simple steps, surely you can also do it. Because you take your car and you say, I will do it for you. The next day, we will do it together. The other day, you do it. In other words, you sponsor by saying, I do, we do, you do. <laughs> and when you do that, you found that uh, 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 I had to change the cottage that I was staying in as a teacher. I, we used to live in a teacher's cottage. For those who don't understand it, it's a building with four walls. That's a teacher.